Welcome back to part two of this week's Yawa, where we are going to answer some really great questions. Um, Ethan and I just got done finishing part one, and literally, I said, I think that's the best Yawa we've ever done. If you haven't watched or listened to it yet, go back, listen to that. Tell us in the comments, what do you think? Part one, good, bad, indifferent? Best of the best, or just so-so. So, so. Anyway... If it's your first time to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We really Boop. appreciate it. Um, so you don't miss any of our really great videos that we're talking about. So I want to answer this first question because I have a mosquito bite on the outside of my arm. You want me to scratch it for you? No, or or what you no. what you pointing it out for? It itches. You want me to scratch it for you? No, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I want to answer this first question because guess what? Hunting season is here. I mean, dove season's opened up and we are gonna be going to Montana here pretty dang soon. So hopefully. We are gonna be going to Montana here pretty dang soon. Heard some horrible stories about lizards or something. Yeah, it's still a couple weeks away, so it's got time to melt. Anyway. Yeah, the only thing is that I'm saying right now is the cold weather changes the flight patterns and everything of the grouse. So they end up everybody that's a big uh, sharp tail hunter kind of knows what I'm talking about. When it gets cold, they into big old big flights and then, and then they're virtually to impossible hunt. to get close to them. So we just have to evaluate if we get cold and what happens. Okay. Wah, wah, wah. We'll see. Push that button. We've got that button. Oh, which one is it? I think it's the teal one. This one? Teal. <laughs> nope, I was wrong. Ah, you were right. I was like, green. had it floating over the green button, and then she's uh, like, no, 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 press the teal. I think that's the first time I've pressed the right button. It is. And we haven't pressed those buttons in a long time. We got to use them again. It's fun. Anyway, we digress. Here's the question from Gabriella Elizabeth Ryder. Yawa question. What are some must-haves for the first ever hunt season for both dog and handler? Plan to do upland hunting this fall. I'm extremely excited for our first season. However, I've never hunted in my life. I'm mainly hunting for my dogs because they have a true drive for it and training them to do something they were bred for has sparked a passion in me. I feel ill-prepared gear-wise, but dogs are ready training-wise. So two things to start off with. Awesome question. It is an awesome question and I love the way that it was put in there. She wanted it answered in a Yawa, so she threw that in. Yawa question. Commented in one of the YouTube videos. Probably one of the last Yawas. Yes. But you can comment on any of our YouTube videos. We're pulling all of the questions that we're answering in these from YouTube videos. So. And I also love the fact that you're saying, hey, you've never hunted before, but you're doing it for your dogs because this is what they've been bred for. This is what they're training for. Um, And that is really awesome that it sparked a passion in you. So a couple of things. Um, You want to make sure that you have your hunting license for wherever you'll be hunting. Key. Yes. Um, And most likely you'll also need a hunter safety class and card. Mm -hmm. Then some states allow you to take them online. I would advise against doing that if at all possible. Some people look at hunter safety as more of a, I have to take hunter safety. And they really teach a lot of good stuff. You know, the book portions kind of sometimes, but a lot of them have an actual hands-on portion. Like a practical part? Yes. And you, A, get to shoot and handle guns most of the time. Safely and learn what proper gun handling is. Yep. And then they have you do some simple things like... Um, walk with somebody and cross a fence and handle a firearm while doing that and teach you the proper way to do that. And then also, uh, when I took hunter safety, which was a couple days ago, couple years ago, um, they actually had us go up to a landowner and ask them for permission. And I didn't even think about the fact of how beneficial or important that really was to kind of infuse into a young mind. Because I took hunter safety at the earliest age that I was allowed to. I think 11 or 12 or something was in Iowa at the time when I took it. So 
Um, but you know, it was important for us to understand that people have land and and there's public ground too. But if you find a spot and you go, that looks like a great spot to hunt, you can go talk to the landowner and ask them for permission. Now it's probably not probably it is harder today with a lot of the things that are going on, but still you can go ask. Um, and, uh, that got brought up and not to pick on Jess, but she, she said that to me the other day. She's like, can you go, how do you get different permission to go to places or something to that effect? I said, you can always go ask the landowner, you know what I mean? Um, and she's like, oh, I didn't really even think about that 100%. So it's important to, uh, it's an important thing to mention. Yeah. So, um, as you can tell, we're big on safety and following the rules. Uh, so I would also recommend having a med kit. Uh, first aid kit for your dog, as well as maybe some things for you. But, um, if you are interested in what kind of things we suggest to put in a med kit, we actually have a video on a med kit. It was actually part of a giveaway, but it still goes through everything that we recommend that goes in a med kit, how to use some of the stuff like Ethan actually staples his arm in this video. Spoiler, go watch it. It was epic. Um, (laughs) it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Staple his arm, remove the staples with the remover. So um, check it out. But it also talks about all the things that you should have in a kit. And we actually have the kits available on our website, I believe. Um, I took them down for a while. So I don't, like I said, I don't know if they're up because during COVID, it was really hard to get some of the supplies and it was hard to fulfill. It was really, really hard. But I think that based on everything coming back in stock and stuff, (laughs) that they are back up. Um, So those are some of the things that I definitely recommend a good pair of boots for yourself, comfortable boots, comfortable pants and clothing, um, a good vest that fits comfortably, that has enough room to hold the game that you recover. Um, and I recommend an orange hat. It's not necessarily required. Depending on the state that you're in, um, orange is not always required for upland hunting unless it's required in a subsequent or what would be a better a season that is happening at the same time like deer season yeah so a lot of times upland seasons are going to run from x date through the end of the year and there will be other seasons that happen to hunt deer or whatever in between there and if there's a rifle season going on and you are in the field actively hunting pheasants even though it may not be required for that you are still required um it's the same thing with archery hunting you're not required to wear orange when archery hunting, but if you're archery hunting during rifle season, you need to be wearing orange. It is a requirement and it's drastically safer to do so. So though it may not be a requirement, um, I still highly recommend it because safety, it's just safety, safety, safety. Yeah, yes. you, you, it's not going to prevent you from sneaking up on the birds or anything. Yes. Um, the other side of it is um, kind of back on the landowner aspect of things, a really good way to do figure that out. It's uh, an app you can get for your phone called Onyx Maps, O-N-X, the letter X, Maps. And it is a, it's a plot map on your phone. Um, you can actually download some of the maps too, which is a pretty cool thing. So if you don't have cell phone reception or something like that. Where you're going hunting, yep, you can pull all that stuff up ahead of time. It'll show you the property lines. You can get topos, you can get some different things mixed in there, but owner information, most importantly, it has who pays the taxes, which can usually get you pretty close to who you need to talk to about hunting. So that's also a really good point. Um, what else would you say that is a requirement? Good ammunition. So if you are hunting, um, if you're hunting ducks or something like that, you also need to make sure that you have non-toxic ammunition, Mm -hmm. which is something to think about. Um, we use, uh, primarily Kent ammunition, uh, for all of the hunting stuff and training. Yeah. And training loads. Um, they've got their poppers for blanks as well as their target loads that we use in training. The only thing from an ammunition stand, ammunition standpoint that we don't use Kent for would be like uh, 209 primers, 209 primers and 22 blanks for Things so, uh, they've got a really good selection of steel loads as well as non toxic upland and waterfowl loads. And, um, 
if you're looking for some really heavy stuff, they actually have tungsten ammo, which I will be shooting for the first time this year when we go goose hunting. I'm going to actually try and shoot some tungsten, which is has a higher density than lead, so they're supposed to be harder hitting. And we're going to do a little comparison video, I believe is my plan, if we can make it happen. Um, the difference between, I think those tungsten loads are like four and a half dollars a piece. Um, <laughs> so they're not cheap, but uh, we're going to do kind of a comparison with that and the um, really quality uh, Fast Steel 2.0. That's what it was. I was looking fast. I was almost going to say that, but I didn't actually read your mind today. So steel, steel, fast steel 2.0 rounds, which are drastically more affordable and still really, really good. So, um, and then for your dog, I would also recommend, uh, the potential, depending on the type of cover you're hunting, um, a chest protector. We run chest protectors on our dogs. A lot of times, um, depending on the type Not of Not neoprene ones. Yes. Not neoprene. Um, it's more of a cordura nylon chest only protector so that if they're hopping, Barbed wire fences, it's a little added protection as well as the type of cover. If it's super abrasive and um, rough, it helps protect their chests a little bit, which can get pretty raw. And then if you are Typically water- Typically standing grain fields are really, really hard on dogs, like standing Milo or standing corn even sometimes. And it doesn't even have to be standing. It could be cut because the dogs still are running through you know, the stubble and mm-hmm. it can be pretty rough on them. Um, and then if you're waterfall hunting, because I don't think it's said if you were upland hunting for sure, but if you're waterfall hunting, we just tried out, um, we just tested out in a sense of fitting the Mo Marsh's new Versa vest on some of our dogs. And it looks to be a really good option for short hairs or other breeds other than labs, which it seems like most of the other vests are really geared towards fitting. Yeah. Designed for water dogs. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, um, this would be a potentially good option for you. We're going to be testing it out this, uh, hunting season as well to see how it stands up, but it looks like a really good option. Yeah. We've got one rocking and rolling on shooter. So expect to see some of that. Yeah. He hunts a lot of waterfall. So that was a really good question. I hope we were able to answer it, answer it to the best of our ability as well as, um, get you the information you needed. So the next question that I kind of wanted to talk about um, with talking about first time hunting dogs is from Signe Nylander. Hi from Sweden. Sweden. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. (laughs) It just kind of came out of there. This is awesome. I found your channel this week and have already plowed through almost 50 videos. Anybody that can top that. In one week, call it out. Put it in the see. comments. Who, who, who binged the most here? Oops. Must mean they are good, though. Ah. <laughs> I have recently gotten my first own dog, an Aussie female named Laika. She is now 20 weeks old, and our training is going awesome. She is such a smart pup and super fun and easy to train. I have noticed she has a talent for retrieving, and she loves to track, as well as search for dummies. I absolutely don't intend to hunt with her. However, my next dog will be a working field line Labrador or a GSP that I'm going to train to become a bird dog. But my question for you is, have you any experience training or working with non-hunting dog breeds for hunting? Any thoughts? Can they become successful if only to some degree? Keep up the good work. So that's a good question. Um, That's awesome that you have been binging our videos. Um, and Laika as an Aussie, it seems like those cattle and working dog breeds are very intelligent and very trainable. So the fact that she wants a job, wants a purpose and is doing that via retrieving, tracking, um, and the other training that you're doing is awesome and not completely unexpected. I mean, you watch some of these dogs that are trained to do choreographed dance routines. Those are pretty awesome. I know... Well, I would guess that most of our short hairs wouldn't be able to do that. Maggie would have been maybe the only one. Maybe. Maybe. And it would have been a really short dance routine that it, like involved three moves. <laughs> but um, so the fact that you've got a dog that is highly intelligent, 
definitely helps them be able to learn new goals, new training things. So I've got a, we, we know of a couple of different dogs, first of all, that are off breeds that do a little bit of this. And one of which is, uh, doesn't, well, I guess technically a dachshund is a hunting dog. You're talking Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Yeah. Aaliyah's dog is not, that's what I was about ready to say, actually. So Aaliyah's dog is, I don't think it's just, a, is a purebred dachshund. I think it's like a purebred mutt. Just a It small, looks like a weenie dog. Well, maybe it has some weenie dog in it. I don't know. I'm stalking her on Facebook. Phone, phone a friend. Phone a friend. I got to see if she's got anything about her weenie dog. But it's, it looks it's like a weenie dog. It's definitely not a bird dog. Right. Fish and it retrieves fish too in this picture. What? Yeah. That's a what? <laughs> Um, but it's it's smaller. The thing's only this big. Yeah, um, it's it's a little dachshund. Yeah, but I mean there's some English cockers that are little that can retrieve pretty dang big okay. birds. Well, maybe before this is over we'll know what it is. Long story short, it's a teeny tiny little itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow non- polka dot bikini. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong song. Non bird dog, and uh, she uses it as a strike dog. It runs in, flushes, retrieves. It's just it, 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 there are dogs that can do that. Put the time in, have a dog that has something, and you are starting with a dog that is a working breed by nature. So incorporating a new job isn't that uh, abnormal. Uh, much like versatile dogs that we train short hairs becoming detection dogs or search and rescue dogs or any of those kind of things. And then we actually have another uh, friend who has a terrier, pit bull. Pit bull. Mm -hmm. That he uses for retrieving work as well and duck hunts with. I actually have a really cool picture uh, that we're going to pop up on the screen as well as I can try and show it to the camera real fast. But um you know how that works. You just have to hold it at our face. That's the oh, focus face, zone. Face. There you go. Yeah. Zoom in on that. But that's Max. <laughs> and he what do you think of that. <laughs> but he is a duck retrieving fool. I mean, he retrieves all of these ducks um, and does a really nice job for his owner Joe. These are all geese. There was one picture that had ducks. Oh, so those geese. Oh, there are some ducks, aren't there? Yeah, the ones on top, those are mallards. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And there's some Canada geese in there, too, it looks like. Oh, Canada. Anyway, so Max is obviously not also a specific hunting breed. He's a pit bull terrier, and he has been trained to retrieve waterfall. And he has to be able to swim. And those dogs are fairly muscle-bound with not giant feet. So the no. fact that he's able to do that is very impressive. It's essentially like watching Dwayne the Rock Johnson try and go swimming. I'm sure he's not that good at it. He was in Baywatch. Oh, snap. <laughs> so haters going to hate, but. Maybe it's not. Let's go with uh, next step. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know. But anyway, so muscles. having a non-specific hunting breed, sure, they can learn and be trained to do something that they haven't necessarily been bred for. Speaking of which, though, Max might benefit from one of those Versa vests by Mo Marsh because, I mean, he is not built by a lab, like a lab either. Yeah, there's a lot of gappies in that. Uh, maybe we can hook him up. Yeah, look at this vest picture. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah, that's uber gapy. So that Versa vest, I think, would be a little bit better fit for him. Um, but anyway, so, yes, non-hunting specific breeds can also learn to do hunting behaviors. Um, we like to say dogs that have been bred for it are going to typically come to that a little more naturally. Um, and I'm not, not recommending. You go down to the pound and pick up a... Uh, what you might call it and say, this is going to be the next bird dog. But I mean, if it's already your family dog and you say, we kind of want to do this, it's, it's a possibility. For sure. So that was another really good question that I wanted to answer. Do we have time? Nope. The green button. We don't have time for another 
question in part two, but we will be back very soon with part three, and we'll try and get through just a few more questions for y'all. Thanks guys for watching. See you soon.